Okay, guys, we finally got some time with Scott <laughs> Myers. We were waiting in line all day to talk with him. He runs a successful podcast. But, Scott, you also help so many people just get into mm -hmm. self-storage. Mm -hmm. What have you seen since COVID-19? So much positive attention mm -hmm. has been put on the self-storage industry mm -hmm. uh, for people to either look at it as an investment or a possible retirement yeah. avenue. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Wow, well, we, we've been at this a while, and so uh, we've seen a, a few different cycles. And so, obviously, we got a lot of traction uh, during COVID, and all eyeballs were on self-storage. And so we saw a lot of multifamily folks come into the space, a lot of private equity coming into the space. Uh, but for the solopreneurs that were either uh, maybe in multifamily or in single family or just looking to start a business, um, they saw this as, a, well, we've been known as a, the recession either proof or recession resistant uh, industry to come into, so a lot of traction with that. Um, I, I think as a, you know, we educate, uh, we syndicate, we also develop, we buy existing facilities, and so we cover the gamut. Um, so when a lot of folks come to us, uh, you know, they want to get in, they want to get in right away. Everybody's impatient and they don't feel like they have to go through and, you know, really educate themselves on the business. And so what we've seen is a, a lot of uh, maybe over-exuberant investors that don't really understand, mm -hmm. you know, what it takes to get into the business. Simple, predictable business model, but you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta learn. You know, you need to know what you need to know. And so I, I think uh, what we've seen, not not to put a negative spin on it, is a whole lot of folks that tried to get into it that uh, didn't really do it well, and maybe some folks that did get into it and now wishing they would have done their homework a little bit um, sooner. Um, all that said, you know, we we educate people and teach them how to get into the business, and uh, many of those folks are doing uh, extremely well. Um, but I think there's a, a, an awful lot of folks that uh, maybe misunderstand self storage and some of the threats uh, in, in the industry right now, as well as some of the threats um, in investing in real estate, especially uh, ground up developments right, right now. Right. Uh, we're positive on it and you know, we understand that you know, a pound of due diligence goes such a long ways and uh, just educating yourself and doing the due diligence, you, know, you still, the model, the, the financial analysis models, you know, all the, the, the procedures and things that we put in place for due diligence, nothing changes during these times. Um, it's just our cost of capital went up and so we just need to account for that and make sure that we're still you know, sticking to our guns and making good solid decisions based upon the principles that we've had in place for years. Right. You made an awesome point there, Scott, about the cost of capital going up. Mm -hmm. So what are the three sort of pitfalls you see newcomers to this space fall into yeah. and, and get blindsided by? Mm -hmm. And now that there's less room for error with capital being so expensive, what are the top three yeah. things you can advise newcomers to yeah. on a due diligence front? Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, quite honestly, mindset is, is one of them. I've heard many folks that, um, you know, they're excited to get in and they begin to educate themselves and they begin to looking at properties and they get disappointed. They're thinking, oh, well, I can't find any deals. You know, where's the low hanging fruit? Well, the low hanging fruit's been gone for a few years now. Yeah. And so, you know, they, they, then they try to manufacture and put a square peg in a round hole and they think, well, maybe if I can get a little bit better in the operations here or, you know, maybe our lease up is going to be a little bit um, better than we think or better than the feasibility study or better than our consultants say, um, then, then this will work. And they begin jiggering in the numbers to try to make it work, um, or they decide that, wow, this isn't all that great, but I got a goal to get into my first facility this year or three this year, and they say, well, I'll just make it up on the next one, and I think that is the worst decision I think anybody could make, and so I think it's the mindset of saying, first of all, you know, teaching people and showing them and helping them recognize that um, a bad deal is a bad deal, and you're not going to make it up on the next one. You got to get a solid one to begin with, or there may not be a second day or third deal, right. so I, I, I think that's uh, the first. Um, the second is um, not sticking, not, not really learning the, an underwriting model and knowing that that has changed, as you know, so much during this, these past three years. Uh, we used to have a 5% property management that we would throw into our underwriting and we would uh, project a 3% increase in rates when we get in and a 2% increase in operating expenses. That has gone out the window, you know, with inflation that has affected everything and rising energy costs and operating costs. Um, I think people have basically underestimated their, their expenses because they're looking at an old business model and they're not really looking at it for realistic what it is. Getting into a facility in which uh, they know that they're going to have to clean it up if it's a value add and they don't account for that drop off of income as they clean up their accounts receivable and their capital expenditures and they're going to get behind their projections in the first three months if they don't account for that. So I think it's just that solid underwriting that they really need to be able to look at and then also have somebody look over their shoulder. Um, so I think those are those are the first two. And then the third is I think they just don't know what they don't know. And uh, people, they, they still think that it's a little easier business model and they don't understand you know, then what it takes to run it, um, the attention that it takes. It's not a set it and forget it business model. And you, you have to not only know the numbers like we just talked about, but then you have to be pounding those numbers on a monthly basis. Yeah. You have to train the manager or the management company. You have to train your asset managers to keep an eye on things. Set um, really good and really solid benchmarks and KPIs uh, to, to get in place. And then you as the owner, the solopreneur, you have to continue to monitor that and make sure that you hit that. Because once you get behind, so difficult to catch up back up again. So um, all of that just means you know doing your homework, understanding it, understanding your financials, the financials are the business. Um, not you know staying disciplined and, and not uh, saying I'll, I'll make it up on the next one or just um, think, well, it'll get better 
better next month or we'll double it next month, that, that doesn't happen. Right. Um, you've got to mind the store and you've got to keep on the numbers and keep on the people that are responsible for making those numbers. Right. Scott, thank you so much for all this information. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this is a must here for anybody looking to get into this space. Mm -hmm. And people need to hear this as well. It's an awesome mm -hmm. industry, but it's one you got to do your homework on it. And it, the work uh, produces the results. Absolutely. Scott, Absolutely. thank you so much, and I uh, hope you had a great show. I certainly did. Thanks so much, James. Good to see you again.